Dear students, in this module, we're going to look at how to extract the peptide sequence tags and an algorithm for it. I will explain this to you with the help of a flowchart. So let's start. To begin with, the concept of peptide sequence tags, it simply means that if you have a peptide or a protein that you made in MS1 and you took it for fragmentation in MS2, you fragmented it using some fragmentation technique which actually fragmented one specific bond per molecule and obtained a spectrum from it. Now you have tried to mine or you have to, you have processed that spectrum and arrived at the sequence of the peptide. This process is a little complex because what you have to do is you have to subtract the smaller peaks from the larger peaks in MS2 and you have to see which difference equals that of a molecular weight of an amino acid's molecular weight. So if you have a match of a peak difference with any of the 20 amino acids, then you can safely say that this amino acid was present as part of the peptide or the protein. Let me warm you up with an example. So this was our small protein that we were looking at and the possible fragments that were reported are given here. Of course, if the protein is bigger, then the number of possible fragments can be very large. Assuming that this is the spectrum that is reported from the MS2 and the first peak, the first mass over charge ratio and the second mass over charge ratio and the third mass over charge ratio is given here. And if you subtracted this, then it gave you a Q. And if you subtracted 277 from 376, then it gave you a V. And of course, in this case, it's an M because it is starting from a zero. So in this way, you have obtained the amino acids that are there between the peaks. Now let's take a look at the flowchart. If you are given a set of peaks from the mass spectrum, then you can process them in this chronology. So to begin with, you start reading the peak list from the file. You sort the peaks in order for the larger peaks to be at the end and the smaller peaks to be at the start of the peak list. You define an index for each peak and you initialize it to zero. And peak count is the total number of peaks in your peak list. So you check if your current peak is less than the peak count. In other words, are you at the end of the peak list or not? If you're not at the end, then you define another variable. Next peak list index or IDX next peak. So you have three variables now with you. IDX peak or index of a peak. IDX next peak or index of the next peak. And peak count. Using these three variables, you can run the entire algorithm. Let's see how it works. So if you are still in the peaks and not finished processing them, and if the next peak is also not the last peak of the peak list, then what you do is you take a difference between the next peak, that is the bigger peak because you sorted it earlier, you remember here. So next peak will always be bigger than the previous peak. So once you subtract it, you arrive at the mass difference. So this is the mass difference. So if this mass difference is equal to that of a of an amino acid, so since there are 20 amino acids, you will compare this mass difference with all of these 20 amino acids and the amino acid which is equal to this mass difference, you will store 
the tag of that amino acid and you will be in a position to safely say that this is the amino acid that is the difference between these two peaks. Now, once you have done that, then you can go back here. So once you have obtained the amino acid hop from one specific peak to another one, you can repeat this process from the next peak, but this time the next peak will be your just peak and the peak after that will become the new next peak. So this is important in order to exhaustively search for all possible amino acid tags. At the end, what you do is you combine the PSTs by matching the start and end positions. Similar to what we just saw in the previous slide. At the end, you have stored all the tags and you have connected them together and you have arrived at the sequence of the peptides or simply the peptide sequence tags. So in conclusion, the peptide sequence tags can be extracted from the peak list by looking at the differences between the next peak and the previous peak and if there is an amino acids difference between the next and the previous peak then you start searching for more amino acids from the next peak and by combining such uh, amino acid tags you have the peptide sequence tag. Now a high quality spectrum will give you lengthy or multiple amino acid sequence tags. Of course the lengthier the sequence tag the better because it will, it will help us in identifying the protein from the database.